In this video, we're going to show how we can utilize uh, the Kipware Sketchpad uh, in order to pr produce a program to rough and finish uh, the taper and the 4-inch diameter uh, per the print of the part. Uh, we're going to say that we have a hole already through the part that's finished to a 1.500 diameter and we want to come in and we want to create a toolpath that's going to rough and then finish the 40 degree taper, the 250 radius, and the 4 inch diameter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the sketch pad up and running. And uh, everything in the sketch pad, even though it's a turning program, uh, currently it's drawn using X and Y coordinates. So what we're going to do uh, basically in the sketch pad is we're going to draw the finished profile and then we're going to describe to the software how we want to rough it and then uh, how we want to finish it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at that uh, 4 inch diameter in Z0 and uh, go to the left around the radius and then down the uh, 40 degree taper. Uh, the one thing that we need to know is that uh, the sketchpad has a feature in it called AutoPath. Uh, so you can see we don't know any of the tangency points on that 250 radius and the 40 degree angle. So we're going to let the software automatically calculate that for us uh, as we go through the drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the line going in this direction. I'm going to start the line at X0 and Y of 2 inches. And I'm going to end it where I don't, I don't know the endpoint. So I'm going to put the polar coordinates in. And I'm going to input uh, the angle of the line as 180 degrees. And the length of the line uh, is unknown. So if we don't know all the information, we can use the AutoPath feature. Uh, basically, the software is going to tell us that uh, it just turned the auto path on, and now we can have the opportunity to have a fillet and a line, or just a line if there's uh, just uh, intersecting points. But in our case, we're going to do a fillet and a line, and uh, basically, this uh, this message just uh, comes up to show you that uh, the auto path feature has been employed. And once that is uh, on, auto path is on, we can use the fillet menu to describe the size of the fillet between the element that we just described in the next element. So we're going to use the 250 of the fillet. Then we're going to choose a line going in this direction. And again, you can see because AutoPath is on, some of the elements are uh, whitened out. And uh, the pink elements show the elements that need to be entered for the software to be able to calculate the endpoints. So the endpoint in X is going to be uh, minus 3 inches. The endpoint in Y is going to be 750. The angle of the line, you can see from the diagram, everything starts at the 3 o'clock position and goes around uh, counterclockwise. So we have uh, 180 degrees plus 40, uh, which is the angle of the line. So we have a line that's at 220 degrees. And once I input all the information and I hit AutoPath, you can see that the software has calculated the tangency points and uh, it's come around the line in the 40 degrees. So, And basically uh, what you're drawing in the sketchpad is you're drawing the finished profile. So this is uh, the finished profile that we want. Uh, if we were to create a material, you know, it'd be a, a f completing the square inside this uh, shape. So this is really all we need to be able to create the program to rough this, uh, to rough this contour. I'm going to blow this up a little bit by using the zoom feature. And scrolling of the mouse button is going to give us the, uh, grow the drawing on the screen. So we're pretty much uh, set to be able to uh, start to create the toolpath now. And the one thing that we need to create in the toolpath is we need to tell it a starting point and an ending point of the contour. So the software will automatically join uh, multiple elements together uh, once we select the start point and the end point of the contour. Uh, the start point needs to also generate the direction that we want the cutter to go. So uh, in this case, we want to turn a material off. So we want to cut uh, going left to right, I'm sorry, right to left across the screen. And we want to rough the material from the part. So I'm going to select in the element list, I'm going to select the line. And you can see that we have a, a circle which indicates the start point of the line. So this is also indicating the direction that the cutter will go. It'll start here, and it would go in this direction around the contour. So this is good. If we needed to change this, uh, we can use the reverse direction, uh, which is up on the top left in the Element Edit screen. So I just clicked that, and if you can see, I click this now, the start point ends up over here. Uh, so if we had wanted to come around the, uh, the contour this way, uh, we would have to make sure
make sure that the starting point is down here. Uh, I'm going to reverse it back. I'm going to select this and I'm going to tell it that this is my starting point by selecting uh, the traffic signal, the go light. The line turns green, indicating that this is my starting element uh, for my contour. Now I'm going to find the bottom element, and which would be this element. And uh, the direction of this element uh, is immaterial. Uh, the software is automatically going to link everything together going in the direction that we've indicated with the starting element. So even though the start point is here and the end point here, uh, the software is still going to link it all together. So I'm going to tell this that this is my ending point and the line turns red. So once I have a start point and an end point of my contour, then it uh, becomes available for me to open up the turning menu and describe the cutting parameters. So I can open up the turning menu and now I can describe the cutting parameters that I want to use uh, in order to rough the part. So I'm going to set my clearance uh, amount in Z as 100, uh, my clearance amount in X as 100, and uh, the rapid approach point. So before the cutting program takes over, uh, we're going to bring the tool a little bit closer to the part. So I'm going to use uh, 3 inches in X and 1 inch in Z, and I'm going to get the tool a little bit closer to the part before the uh, cutting program takes over. Uh, the tool parameters, uh, you know, there's a couple ways that you can make programs in the sketchpad. You can make a complete program uh, that's, just, that's all you want to do is what's in the sketchpad. Or you can use this uh, in conjunction with the tree in Kipware T. So maybe there's other things that you want to do to the part and you want to incorporate the program that you're writing with the sketchpad into the tree. And you can do that uh, by just not including any of the tool call information. Uh, so what's going to happen here is it's, we're just going to put in our surface feet that we want to use to uh, rough the part and we're going to not include a tool call and we're not going to include a post uh, or tool number or offset number we're just going to increase uh, include the spindle speed and uh, everything else will be done when we create a main program after we bring these two little pieces of the program uh, into the tree so in my machining parameters down here uh, it's ID cutting uh, it's along the Z so we're going to be turning rather than facing uh, we're going to just rough the part uh, the material is bar stock uh, and we have a depth of cut approach uh, which is rapid because we'll be out in front of the part and we can just uh, wrap it up to the next depth of cut. If you were using this uh, can cycle in order to uh, maybe uh, dig into the part and create uh, like a, uh, an in-depth into the part so you might want to change the depth of cut approach to feed so that uh, you're not wrapping into the material just feeding into material. Well, we're going to se select the depth of cut as a uh, hundred thousandths uh, ten thousandths for finish, uh, twelve thousandths feed rate, uh, the finishing feed we'll get later, the program number we don't need. Uh, all we want is the can cycle to be able to rough the part. So I'm going to hit now create program and I get my program in the uh, in the tree. There's a couple blank lines I'm going to get rid of. And this is our, our can cycle uh, that we can use to uh, rough the part automatically created a Fanuc format because that's what I have chosen G71. Uh, you can see that it does the GO3, the GO1, so it does everything to uh, rough that contour that we have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a Kipware T operation. Uh, I'm in Kipware T Live so I'm just going to change this to uh, Kipware T Live. And I'm going to save it as uh, rough rough sketch one and I'm going to save it. So the G-code program now is saved and I can bring it into the tree in Kipware T but I want to finish the part so I've closed the editor I'm going to open up the screen again and I'm going to change this to finishing I'm going to give it my feed rate of 6 to finish I do want to use cutter compensation so I'm going to turn the cutter compensation on and then uh, basically just hit create program and now we've got the longhand g-code to be able to create the finishing toolpath uh, for, the, for the part and again I'm going to save this and I'm going to save this as finish sketch one so now we have uh, the roughing and the finishing g-code uh, automatically saved into the folder for the kipware tree and now I'm going to use the load program uh, function from the tree and I'm going to go get those two programs uh, that I've created so uh, let's look in here finish sketch one so I'm going to do a rough sketch one first and then I'm going to load uh, the finish sketch one 
So I have my two programs uh, in the tree. And here's a case where if you had something else that you wanted to do to the part in the tree, uh, you know, you can use the conversational menus to create those programs uh, and bring them into the tree as well. So uh, you can use a mixture of the combination of the conversational programs as well as the uh, sketchpad. I'm going to uh, load the uh, create main program and now I'm going to start to create the program uh, utilizing tool calls and link uh, those two programs that I've created through the sketchpad to those tools. So we've got tool num op operation number one, a tool number one, I've set my speeds just to try to speed up the video a little bit, set my spindle speed to 650, my approach direction, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get uh, the rough sketch one and I'm going to double click it which automatically adds it to uh, the list of programs that will be associated with this tool. If, you know, if I wanted to do everything with the same tool, I could just pick select a uh, finish sketch one, and that would come into the box as well. And then I could, uh, you know, do everything with just this one tool. But I'm going to double click this and remove it. So tool number one is going to be the rough sketch. Uh, operation number two, I've set it 700, and I'm going to get the finish sketch one and put it into the box. So now we have uh, two operations two tools. Uh, I've selected my program number here and I've selected my post by double clicking in here. Select the post and then I can hit create g-code. So what happens now is I have a complete program. Uh, it brought in uh, tool number one. Uh, it brought in the part that, it's, uh, that it did for the can cycle in here and then it brought in the finish cycle which is the longhand g-code here. So using a combination, you know, the sketchpad, the tree, uh, the conversational menus, we can create uh, a complete program utilizing the Kipware sketchpad uh, as well as the conversational menus.